Hi, I'm Bruce Johnson, City Manager, and welcome to the City Manager Spotlight. Today I'm with uh, Doug Ogle. And Doug, welcome, and tell me a little bit uh, about uh, what position you hold in the community. Well, um, thanks for having me, Bruce. Uh, this is my third year um, with Guthrie Public Schools. I started out the junior high principal, and then uh, the last two I've been the personnel director with Guthrie Public Schools. And so all the personnel comes through my office, and then I oversee 7th through 12th um, curriculum and uh, just make sure that we're following state guidelines and regulations. Recently um, got on the chamber board and uh, going to serve as the chamber chair for 2016. One of the reasons that uh, we brought you in here today because of a strange idea that uh, city manager came up with when he was looking at a, an old picture and uh, on that old picture of City Hall it had this little sign down there bottom and the bottom of a second row window that said Chamber of Commerce. As I come over here and started learning about the community and what we did as a community, uh, one of the um, vital organizations we have is the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, essentially all the businesses come together, becoming members and investors together uh, and helping grow the community. And I know as the incoming chair, uh, kind of tell us a little bit about what your vision is of uh, bringing the community together and, and growing us together. Well, first of all, I'd like to, you know, and speaking on behalf of the Chamber, I just think that the City and the City Council for giving us that option as a board to go back and look and take a vote on that. Um, I think it is a unique opportunity to um, come together and try to um, work with the city, the CVB and the EDC and c get all on the same page. And so I think our goal as the chamber is um, we are now a chamber and we're, we're going to start working with all the entities involved. Um, but we, we have an identity now and so um, being able to come in um, with the building that you've um, given us in the office spaces. Now we can um, get together, work together and try to build up all our businesses and uh, the community of Guthrie. Yeah, and I've, uh, I think I've wrote uh, essentially in my piece in the uh, uh, Guthrie Newsleader stating that um, we have different functions uh, as different organizations and one of the functions of the city is make sure that we provide uh, those public uh, services and programs uh, that our community desires but along with that we're a direct beneficiary of the Chamber of Commerce because uh, there's no other organization that actually brings together all of our businesses underneath one umbrella and at that point in time uh, go out there and achieve your guys goals of the organization. We're direct beneficiaries of those programs you guys put at the Chamber of Commerce because at the end of the day without any kind of sales tax I cannot provide any services or any programs back to our, our community. Um, so what is it about uh, our new chamber that you guys are, are looking forward to doing in the future? Well, I think that the goal of our chamber is going to be to, to grow our businesses that we have. Um, one of the things that uh, I'm excited about is, you know, we have a new CEO that's running that and, and Hetty Coleman, and he's a go-getter, and I think that uh, he's going to get out and provide opportunities for all our um, businesses to grow here in the community. Um, I think he'll work hand-in-hand um, -hand with um, the organizations, the, the tourism and the EDC, um, and provide a great chance for our community to grow. And so I'm real excited about that as a chamber of not only growing our businesses, but working with the different entities and growing the community of Guthrie. And that's that's kind of what I put it at the end of my piece is that we actually have one shared value and that's growth. Uh, at the end of the day if uh, everyone is growing, uh, we're growing the pie, everybody has a chance at, at getting at that, that pie and uh, but one of those slivers of that piece of the pie which you're directly involved with and which I know that uh, Hetty's been uh, partly responsible for working together is, is some stuff that you guys are doing at the chamber uh, to help out our school district and uh, supplying um, uh, I guess different activities and different uh, supplies for those activities in our, in our in our athletics there at GPS from a grade school on up. Could you tell us a little bit about that program the Chamber's doing? Yeah, that was basically started by the Logan County Health Department and Nikki um, was kind of leading that and we had our first education workforce uh, committee and one of the ideas was what can we do as a, a chamber um, and help the schools and so of course being with the school I was on that committee and uh, one of the things that we were really looking for is um, especially with the health department is what can we do to promote fitness and so Nikki had already started um, looking at different ways and had started an initiative to get different types of equipment for the schools um, whether it was hula hoops, basketballs, um, just different equipment that uh, may enhance the ability for our kids to be more physical fit and so um, we were able to do that run a cam campaign and Nikki and them and did a great job of going out and getting a lot of different equipment that's going to benefit our kids. 
Yeah, along with that education, are there some other areas that the Chamber's going to be focusing on uh, in this upcoming year? Yes, um, they've worked on different committees of roundtables of helping the local businesses grow in different entities. They have different speakers that are coming in and roundtables once a month. And so not only are we helping the schools, we're helping the businesses and investors that we have of growing their business and helping to sustain the stuff that they already have going and hopefully make them be more profitable. Yeah, that's kind of one of the things that I've been witnessing over the last six months is that uh, I've also had our CEO uh, from the chamber come in and help me out and uh, doing some business recruitment in uh, but uh, with that being said, I'm glad that he'll be closer to me so we can have uh, those meetings uh, on an instantaneous basis. Matter of fact, we had one uh, this afternoon uh, that he's bringing someone by and I was able to meet him uh, just because uh, he was in South City Hall and we were able to bump into each other and have those introductions. Um, but it's just that kind of togetherness and that kind of uh, creativity uh, I think that will help prosper the community and I see that each and every week at the different activities the chambers come at, that are putting on including the the chamber coffees uh, um, I guess the after hours events that we're having uh, could just speak about that fundamental um, I guess value of the Chamber of Commerce is right now is just bringing people together and, and helping to share information. The chamber coffees we meet Wednesday and uh, we're able to uh, get all the investors that are able to show up they get to come in kind of talk about the different things that are going on maybe that they're having um, go on with their business for that upcoming weekend um, and try to get the word out and so great chance to come in visit with the, the other investors that are chamber members and uh, communicate just what's going on and make some um, connections there um, once a month we have a business that hosts the after hours and uh, one of the things is, is that's a great chance to get in to meet different people and the thing that I've realized uh, of getting the chance to be a part of it is those are usually two different groups and so the after hours and the um, chamber coffees we're getting different people in there so just a chance to really get out and network and uh, learn about different businesses of what we have in our community. Yeah, and I think uh, I think even this morning at the Chamber Coffee they were with, uh, we ran over time that they're usually scheduled for because so many people are coming, bringing in information and distributing that information. And it's all nice to hear. Uh, and with that being said, uh, any additional information that will be going on that, that we're going to look forward to uh, for the public school district uh, uh, in this upcoming months until the end of the, end of the school year? Well, you know, with the school, we're, we'll be getting ready to start testing here after spring break and so that's always a big part and um, teachers get a little bit nervous and the students do too so um, you know we're still on finishing up our phase one of the bond issue and I know Dr. Simpson will be out uh, relaying the information about what's coming in phase two and the drawing of the new school and so he'll be getting um, input from that from all the stakeholders and uh, on the chamber part of it uh, the last Thursday in February we'll be hosting our um, chamber banquet and so we'll be getting information out to everybody about that and hope everybody can come out and attend that. I think that's one of the beautiful things about living in a city like Guthrie is that uh, we've got gentlemen like Doug Ogle who wear multiple hats, uh, not only working for the Guthrie Public School uh, System, uh, but also comes in as the chairman uh, of our Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to thank you for that. And at this point in time, I'd like to throw it over to Choctaw with Dr. Mike Simpson. Thanks, Bruce. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be on here today. I'm Mike Simpson, superintendent of Guthrie Public Schools. And today we have Dennis Schultz, assistant superintendent of operations. Uh, Dennis has a lot of hats that he wears for our district. But especially right now, uh, the most important hat that he wears is the hat of what I would call CFO or chief financial officer. And Dennis, you've had, uh, you had that role as you entered the district how many years ago now? 18 years ago, almost. It'll be 18 years ago, June 30th of this coming year. So uh, I've been here long enough. I should have broken the district by now. <laughs> so Dennis is the, one of his duties is he, he's the keeper of the funds, and he's the one that, uh, that monitors where we are financially. It's a very critical time for school districts. And, uh, probably, uh, if you've read or, or watched any of the media statewide, you know that we have a funding crisis in our state, and that's affecting our public school system as well. And so, uh, Dennis, you've been here 18 years, and I think before that you were with another school district, and then before that you were a school auditor. So you've been around school finance a long time. Um, is this, have you been through this before? And tell me, tell me what you think, where we're headed. I wish I could say where we're headed. I think this is probably 
has the potential to be the worst financial picture that we've ever had. We thought when the Great Recession came along in 08 and 2009 that that would be the worst, but the federal government and the era stimulus funds kind of mitigated the effects that, that it could have had potentially on school districts. So without that safety net this time, I'm really concerned that this could be the worst financial crisis that school districts have had in the 30 or so years I've been around. Well, and, and I think, uh, Dennis, I, I think you'd probably agree with me that the challenges we have in Guthrie are, are even, even more profound because of the past failures of bond issues and some of the deferred maintenance that we have on our buildings as well which make it even more difficult as we've gone through the years because we've taken uh, we've had to do what normally would be a bond project in many other districts and do that out of the building fund um, talk about how bond funds uh, how they can help us as we go forward with with future bond issues possibly and the bond issue that we currently are running okay uh, you know the the situation we're in right now without the bond fund that we currently have in place probably no maintenance would be done to any buildings we would we would be just patching what needed to be patched and move on at least with the existing bond issue we will get some major repairs done but as far behind as we've been we need to continue that this bond issue will build an elementary school but with just the general operating funds that we have, even in good times, you know, notwithstanding the times we're in right now, there's not enough there to operate the school district and to keep your buildings maintained. Many districts vote bond issues and they buy all their transportation equipment with bond issues, uh, computers, uh, copying equipment and duplicating equipment. We do all of that already out of our general operating funds where most districts, uh, uh, growing districts and districts that surround us don't do that. So they've got some advantages uh, as far as weathering this economic downturn over us. And if we had done those out of, the, out of bond funds, then we would have more money to go in the classroom. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Um, as, as we look down the road at, at what the legislature's done, we've taken uh, a a 3% cut for this year, uh, which I think the last time I had that figured was about 450, a little over $450,000 for this year. What do you see with your past history of everything forecasting for next year going into uh, meeting the $900 million plus, and some people say over $1 billion hole in next year's state budget? Um. I'm not really sure how many school districts will survive that, especially smaller school districts. Uh, and, and it goes even further than that. I know we were discussing before we got here that that 3% cut and that $450,000, that's only what we've been cut from what we were allocated at the beginning of the year until now. And it doesn't even take into consideration that we were actually when the year first started already cut over eight hundred thousand dollars from what we actually collected last year so when you compare where we're at now to where we were last year we've actually had to absorb over 1.1 million dollar cut in state aid uh, and that's with a 600 million dollar revenue shortfall a one billion dollar revenue shortfall it's just hard for me to understand how school districts will be funded adequately to, to merely survive. Class sizes are going to balloon across the state. And that's the other thing. Not only did we get less money than last year, we've grown another 4,000 kids mm -hmm. in the state. So all of that adds up to an unprecedented situation I don't think we've experienced in, in probably in the history of the state of Oklahoma. It, it's almost the perfect storm, isn't it, for, for failure financially because uh, we've had these flat budgets, which weren't really flat because as you have a flat budget, yet the insurance that we're required to pay for, for teachers and staff members has gone up, so it's actually a reduction. And then on top of that, we've had more kids in the state, so we actually get less money there too because there's the pie is, is the size the pie is, and you have to cut it in smaller pieces because you have more kids. 
Um, when, you know, when you've dealt with this before, how do you sound the warning flag to the community? Boy, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I, I think that the community hears what's going on at the state level by watching the news. Um, I, I'm not really sure that in the past we've done anything to, to really sound an alarm because educators always just figure that they're going to find a, ma a way to make it work. They don't want to alarm yeah. the general public. And so maybe we just keep it to ourselves a little more than we should in, in most cases. But uh, in this case, I think that there's some potential for some real severe consequences when it's all said and done. Because there's nothing we can do to the revenue picture between now and next year to substantially fix the problem. Yeah, and. One of the things I, I was asked by one of our board members, we've got to get this information out to the community. We've got to get it out. And I, I said, you know, the, the challenge with this is you sound all these warning flags and, and these horns and everything else, and nobody hears you until it's real, until it touches them. And my fear with what's ahead of us is that it's going to touch people and and it's going to make our jobs as educators harder. Mm -hmm. It's going to make it more difficult for at-risk students. It's going to make it more difficult for students that that are trying to break the cycle of poverty in their homes with an education. And, and, and when you look at things like that, and we don't have the resources to do the things that we need, the safety nets that we have, that, that I know you've been around this district long enough to see when some of those safety nets were removed with counseling services and librarians and things like that, we went backwards. Exactly. And I don't think there's any doubt that that if what we see ahead of us, you and I as, as trained administrators and educators, I don't think there's any doubt that we can't be alarmed at what's in front of us because of, of what it will do to our students. Exactly. We, we will be trying to keep the doors open if everything happens the way it looks like it's going to happen for the next year. And that's not good for kids. That's just not. Well, I, you know, I don't want to be down. I always try to have these upbeat, but the, the reality is uh, in front of us that, that we have to see coming. And uh, one of the things that I'm most thankful of since I've been superintendent of this district, is having Dennis Schultz. He is a tremendous uh, finance person. He makes all of us look good because he fi finds a way to make it work. But uh, his job, all of our jobs, are getting harder as we speak because of the financial situation. Thank you so much for being here today, and let's, uh, let's hope that the finances improve. Let's do that. Let's all do right. That. Thank you for joining us today.